NFL gambling picks for week number five against the spread. Brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can bet on these games and any other ones. Watch and wager at any of their six sportsbook locations. Horseshoe, Samstown, Gold Strike, First Jackpot, Hollywood, Fitz Casino. Bam. Nailed it. Get more information over at tunicatravel.com. Let's roll right in. I went 1-3-1 and one last week. That's rough. It was tough, my first losing ahead, week. Buddy. It Like, I went 3-2 and two the first three weeks. Correct. I went 1-3-1 and three and one last week. You went 2-1-2. Two, and two. You had two pushes. You were this close from being 3-0-2 oh, had the Browns not lost to the Raiders. Thanks, I'm, Goodell. I'm 10-9-1. You are 12, 6, and 2 for the year. Our picks contest over at winningcureseverything.com. Marcia W. Marcia W., however you say the name. Obviously, I don't ask for a pronunciation. But uh, but she's from Collierville. She won last week, went 8 and 2. That's right. Big ups. Won on the tiebreaker. Uh, last week was a rough week for a lot of people. First, like, local person that we've had. Yeah, yeah, we've had a bunch. We had people from South Carolina, Alabama. Memphis area. All of that good stuff. So go sign up over at winningcureseverything.com. It is in the the top right-hand corner. It says Football Picks Contest. Go check that thing out. Sign up. Put your name in. Put your email address in. Pick 10 games against the spread. You can be a winner, too. This week, winner gets a free night stay at the Fitz Casino, along with two free buffet tickets. That new sports book over there is nice. We were there for the grand opening. Correct. Very, very nice. Hung out with our buddy Gary Parrish. Very nice. It was good to see him. Let's jump in. I'm going to let you take game uh, game number one. Game number one. My Cleveland Browns got the Baltimore Ravens coming into town. Look, I know they didn't look good. Baker didn't look great. Receivers didn't help him out. Huey's still running the thing. It's kind of a joke. They should have won that game. That'd be 2-0. and Not 2-0. and They'd have won two in a row. They, well, I mean, they'd be two and zero with Baker Mayfield. They'd be two and zero with Baker Mayfield. I, I think, I think they're going to get right. I don't think this Raven team is as great as their record shows. They have beat up on some bad defenses. Yeah, they I, I, I'm, I'm still not going to concede that this Baltimore Ravens team is an offensive juggernaut. I actually think our Browns defense, my Browns defense, is good. Okay, I know that they've had a lot of people score on them. They're on the field a lot. That has to do with the offense being kind of mediocre, bad, whatever, call it what you want. Plus two, I like home dogs. Give me give me the Browns. The Lions this week are coming to you from the Horseshoe Casino. The line well, I actually got them at plus three. Sorry. The, well, they've got it plus three. Yeah, uh, and so I got them at plus three. You got them at plus three? Okay. Yeah, I just um, said two because I'm wrong. Now, these lines will move. Do not be afraid to go talk to your attendant about this. Just ask them what the updated line is. Just roll with that. Uh, but yeah, plus three. I think you like them there. You do you like them at plus two? You like them at plus one? Yeah, I'm, I I think they have a chance to win the game. Okay, that makes sense. That makes it's sense. It's a divisional opponent, and they're not your normal Browns. This is a better team. That makes sense. Game number one for me: Packers minus one and a half at the Lions Sunday, twelve p.m. on Fox at Ford Field over in Detroit. Look, the Packers are eight and one against the spread at the Lions in their last nine. The Lions are giving up five point three rushing yards per game, or per, sorry, per carry. 6.9 yards per pass attempt. The Packers are plus one in turnovers. Lions are minus four. The Packers' offense will be able to move the football. And you, you just can't shy away from the fact that they're 8-1 and one against the spread at the Lions. This like game stinks to me. I mean, it does stink, but... This game stinks. Aaron Rodgers going into the Lions, I will take it. I will absolutely take it. Roll it up. Packers minus one and a half. I normally like taking dogs. I like taking points. Last week it did really well, taking all those points. I'm going on the road, and I'm I'm betting a favorite. I'm taking our Tennessee Titans at the Buffalo Bills. This Buffalo Bills team is bad. Okay, let's just there's no two ways of cutting it. They had one strange week that is an enigma wrapped in an anomaly, wrapped in however the hell you make that statement. It it, it just doesn't make sense. And I can't figure it out. I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm going to throw it away and say it didn't happen. What are the other three games they've played? Oh, yeah. They're all garbage. They've scored zero points. Our Titans, best defense they're going to play all year. Maybe that's, maybe not all year, all season so far. That's actually one of my 
one of my gambling picks as well. well. Let's get on it with him. Uh, Marcus since, Mariota well, here, look, going since, into Buffalo, got no problems. Since 2016, Buffalo is 2-5 and five against the spread as a home underdog. Tennessee is 3-1 and one against the spread this year. Buffalo is 1-3. Buffalo's offense only averages 4.0 yards per play. That is awful. Aside really from a 27-6 to 6 win at Minnesota, they're averaging 7.67 points per game. That is atrocious. Yep. Now, I'm not saying that the Titans are going to score a whole lot more than that, but they, they don't, don't need have to. to to be able to cover the three. So, it, what, what do they have, Ladder? Three and a half. Three and a half on here. Like, I like this game all the way up to five, six. Like I, I mean, I think I, they're going to beat them bad. I think they will, they will handle the Bills Easily. What's game number two for you? Game number two. Sorry, this is game number three for you. I'm well, sorry. yeah, it is game number three. Sorry. I did the same thing. Arizona Cardinals plus four at the 49ers. Listen, this Arizona team's looking better. Rosen has showed he's a competent team. Like, I got a push last week. They could have easily won that game. All right? He He's controlling the offense. He's commanding the offense. They got David Johnson getting getting going. I don't know that I trust this 49ers team to continue to play well with 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 uh Oh my gosh. CJ. Yeah. How do you say the last Perfect. Name? No, that's Bante Perfect. Uh Bur See, you're asking me things live without Breth- me being Brethard? No. Brethard? Brethard? I don't know how to say it and I'm about to I've just, CJ. I've already, we'll just call him CJ. I've already embarrassed myself. CJ. So, anyway, I'm taking the Cardinals. I, I just at some point in time they're going to get a win. And I'm catching four points. I'm catching more than a field goal. What do I expect him to do? I expect Robbie Gold to kick back and kick field goals. So if, so if he kicks a game-winning field goal, you're cashing a ticket. If he doesn't and the Cardinals win, you're cashing a ticket. I'm going the complete opposite direction of you on this. Keep betting against him. Go ahead. 49ers minus four and a half. CJ, however you say his last name, is not that bad. He he played pretty well. He had two I think picks it's last Bethard. week. Brethard? Bethard. Well, it's, it's a BR. I still think it's Bethard. Okay. Well, that sounds fine. CJ, the backup quarterback, uh, the 49ers can actually run the football. They're averaging 133 yards rushing per game, 5.2 yards per carry. The Cardinals are 2-7 and seven against the spread their last nine as a road dog. They only covered two games, and those were against the Seahawks. They can win at the Seahawks. They always play the Seahawks tough. You were counting that game from last week. It doesn't matter how bad the Cardinals are. They always play well against Seattle. I think the 49ers at home cover this game. I think they win by at least a touchdown. Might be 10 points here. We're I going think, head I think, to head. I'll I take, think the Cardinals are bad. I'll, I'll take the better quarterback in the game. My fourth pick. Taking the Carolina Panthers. Coming off a of bye week. Minus seven, a lot of points in the NFL. This Giants team is—they're just a just a limp handshake, man. They're just—they're just dead. <laughs> There's nothing exciting. A limp handshake. They're just—it's just disappointment, just all around. I think the Panthers are good. I think they're going to score. I, I think Cam Newton has gotten a couple. You know, he got to get healthy, got to get a week off to rest. He's going to get back up. He's going to be running. Uh, I expect DJ Moore to have a big game. Everybody knows McCaffrey is going to get the ball over and over and over, and you're not going to stop him. And pretty much the Panthers, who have a pretty good defense, all they have to do is control Saquon. Yeah. That's that's it. They The Giants have become one-dimensional with a rookie running back. It's pretty uh, pretty sad, isn't it? That's, and to think, to, to start off this year, you thought the Giants were going to win I, like 10 games. I thought they were going to be good, yeah. I had, them, I had them to win a lot of games. You, you had them winning the NFC Oh, East. yeah, I was wrong. Um, game number four. The Rams at Seattle, plus seven and a half. I'm taking Seattle. Seattle is 10-1 and one against the spread as a home underdog in their last 11. There is a ton of hype on the Rams right now. When you see a whole bunch of hype on a team, or even against a team, it can come crashing down. I'm not saying that the Rams are going to lose this game. I'm saying they haven't really been tested in a close game yet. The Vikings game, yeah, you can call it that. That was only a seven-point game at home. On the road at Seattle. Look, Seattle plays well when they're in the do- uh, underdog role at home. It would not surprise me to see Seattle cover this. Like I, I could see it being a field goal game because at some point, it's not all going to be there for the Rams. Like, they're going to have to fight through some adversity. 
I don't know that Seattle is a great team by any means, but my God, I, I watched the Bills a couple weeks ago beat up on Minnesota at Minnesota. Anything is possible at this point, and that 10-1 and one against the spread is a home underdog number. I mean, that's that's a lot. That's a lot. So I'm taking Seattle plus 7.5 on this one. I think Seattle has potential to be catastrophically bad and, and a, a dumpster fire, just falling apart. And so they could. I'm staying away. Well, I'm not staying away. It's not one of my gambling picks, but I'll have money on the Rams. My last pick, Dolphins. They're 3-1. and one. They went into Foxborough against a real good football team and the best coach that's ever stepped on the sideline for football that had just lost two weeks in a row. That They were not going to win that game. That There was nothing on earth that they could have done to control the outcome of that game any more than they already did. They weren't going to win that game. The Bengals are good. The Bengals are better than they've been in a decade. They're not that good. This Dolphins team is good. Adam Gase is the best coach on the field. I don't know that Andy Dalton will be the best quarterback on the field. I think they have a chance to win the game. They're catching six points. I like the Bengals a lot. I like them a whole lot this year. I've made a lot of money betting on them. I don't think they're six-point favorites in the NFL right now against a 3-1 and one team that is only – loss is to a New England Patriots team that was backed up against their wall. I can understand that one. I can understand. Game number five for me, the Broncos at the Jets. Now, it's off the board at the horseshoe. I got it, Jets minus one. That's It's consistently Jets favored, but one but, or two. Yeah, one, one to two points. Mm-hmm. Since 2016, the Broncos are 6-12 and 12 against the spread after a loss and four and eight against the spread as a road underdog. Look, Denver has to travel east for a noon game on a short week. Like, that is that's tough to do, especially after a heartbreaking loss like they had to the Chiefs. I think Sam Darnold gets right in this game. I think the Jets win. I don't think they're gonna blow him out by any means. Denver still has a great defense. We we went through that in, in our uh recap. I still think that Denver has a good defense. I think they are not going to be able to score as many points as the Jets this week. All right. So, do we want to recap them? Sure. I got the Browns plus three. I got the Titans minus three and a half. got the Cardinals plus four and a half. I got the Panthers minus seven. I got the Dolphins plus six. I got the Packers minus one and a half at the Lions. I got Seattle plus seven and a half at home against the Rams. I got the 49ers minus four and a half at home against the Cardinals. The Jets minus one against the Broncos in New Jersey. And then the Titans minus three at Buffalo. That's going to wrap up the NFL gambling picks for week number five.